All right, uh, we are going to uh, start session number four, social media benefits and challenges for the music ecosystem. And uh, with me, uh, we have uh, Professor uh, Pumin, and we have Professor uh, Senora Elton, and we have uh, uh, the Mr. Bob uh, Clarida. So, uh, why, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself like briefly? Thank you very much. My name is uh, Humin Putin from Thailand. I'm a professor at Thammasat University. And now I uh, work with my government about the soft power too. Hi again. Uh, I'll do my intro quickly in case you heard it earlier. Uh, so I am a professor of music industry. You may not realize you, that is a discipline in academia uh, in the U.S. and in a growing number of countries. So I'm a professor of music industry at the University of Miami, and our music industry program is in the School of Music. Sometimes they are in a School of Communications or School of Business. Ours is in a School of Music. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, I have an external role separate from the university as the head of educational partnerships for a new organization in the U.S. called the Mechanical Licensing Collective, the MLC for short. It's um, sort of a collecting society for digital mechanical royalties in the United States. Uh, I'm also uh, an attorney. Thank you. And I was just, I was just up here, so uh, I'm an attorney in New York. My name is Bob Clarida. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Professor Boomin has a presentation to share, so please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I have chosen to present on the topic of a uh, benefit challenge uh, for music ecosystem. I divide my presentation into seven parts. Uh, first, we the topic of soft power in the US, China, Japan, and South Korea, as well as data sharing and social media will be discussed. Next, I elaborate on the regulatory framework of over-the-top service ITU and uh, digital platform. Then I evaluate the regional framework and its challenge. And finally, I summarize. Uh, uh, First of all, I would like to expand how different between uh, hard, po hard power and soft power. Uh, the keyword is uh, not uh, the sanction or enforcement or the policy and culture, but the keyword is what is the uh, difference between uh, coercive power and co-optive power. Uh, now, we are on the information age and uh, the style of the business that's mixed with the information age is not a one-way messaging, but um, two-way street messaging. For example, I would like to show, uh, this is the example of the game, a chess. A chess from um, a European, European style is combat to the, the others, win lost situations, but um, for uh, Eastern uh, culture is quite different. For example, go. we should build a good house uh, for the other, for the good ecosystem and loss in, uh, in, in our ecosystem. Um, for example, uh, this is the uh, example of the successful. Uh, this, the, all of this is the film about uh, National, na nationalist in the film, but uh, 
explained in different way. For example, if uh, someone who knows about uh, Korean film, uh, the film explained uh, very uh, nationalist, but compromised uh, between uh, the big country like US, China, and North Korean too in the same way. This is the two-way messaging. And I would like to start uh, with uh, the policy from Japan, or we call it Japan coup, until uh, now in, uh, in Korean. Uh, we know that uh, the uh, Korean mania is very famous now, and we talk too much about this. I would like to move fast because I don't have uh, too much time. Um, to understand social media platform, one must begin with a uh, comprehension of the universe of governance. Uh, first of all, let's discuss a business relationship involving data sharing. And um, you should understand about um, data sharing platform. And we just talk about generative AI. AI algorithm is important, but the most important model is the data. And data sharing platform is uh, very important for the digital age, too. Uh, I would like to show you, this is the uh, taxonomy of business model, for example, in uh, my country, in, in Thailand. We should uh, understand um, with uh, the key to establishing a regulatory framework for data sharing, begin with taxonomy model. The taxonomy can be framed in several ways, as present in slide. Uh, to cite an example of the taxonomy of optimization and visibility service which illustrate the study of business uh, taxonomy that apply data-driven business model. In addition, uh, this slide also display the um, VCM, VPM, and CIM. Uh, what does it mean? It means a value proposition model, value creation model, and customer interaction model. Um, therefore, it can be observed that such governance can be designed differently in each country to align with its policy and uh, regulation. Okay. Um, governance framework uh, can be designed according to the characteristic of the data as seen in this slide or uh, the data utilization as shown in um, the next one. Uh, for instance, in the case of TikTok, it can be, sorry, For instance, in the case of TikTok, it can be categorized by the data's characteristic or the application of data. Moreover, uh, this picture also demonstrates that uh, categorization of the data utilization method is implicated by um, Netflix in uh, creating a new business. Um, I mean, adaptability to the market. Um, setting, setting up a regulatory framework at this uh, level depends on various dimensions uh, of how each country categorizes the data sharing. And this section presents uh, com comparative information among countries that legislation uh, related to digital information has been passed. Uh, you can also say among the countries that have enacted law related to uh, digital information. 
However, each of them emphasize different things in uh, different matter. To exemplify the two study conducted in Thailand that highlight the importance of over-the-top service, especially um, uh, the change in revenue from broadcasting to over the period of time presented in uh, this uh, slide. Over-the-top service is uh, very important uh, now, and we should know that uh, the law uh, for protected uh, related to uh, this one. Uh, this is the consumer digital light raw by ITU, and you should know that uh, for consumer digital right law, now you should understand about the 10 principle. This picture demonstrates a comparison for an importance of media platform between um, 2020 and 2021. We can also see the sample how the digital platform in Thailand can be grouped um, in uh, this slide. Um, now, I would like to share with everyone how we manage the guideline for um, governance and also compare it to uh, other countries. For example, in Europe, the, uh, you, the EU Commission has classified online platforms into uh, several, several categories, which will be described in uh, this uh, or of the picture here. Okay. Uh, European law is divided into four main areas as shown on this uh, slide, which can be seen in detail as uh, fellow. Um, EU law has been classified by objective, supervision, and enforcement. And for example, P2B has an essential element by this light. However, uh, for um, DMA concern about only a gatekeeper and core platform service. Uh, I compare with the other countries, for example, Japan. Japan has a law uh, and the principle is uh, quite the same as in the EU. Uh, this law uh, we call TFDPA. And if I compare with uh, the China, China has uh, the e-commerce law too. So uh, now we uh, compare with uh, Japan, China, and um, EU. And um, in Thailand, too, in Thailand for digital law, this is the uh, history of um, uh, digital law in, in Thailand from uh, to 2001 until now. And uh, we prove that we have a lot of uh, digital law in, in, in my country. This is the universe of the uh, digital law, and this is the uh, obstacle to promote the, um, the, the soft power in Thailand. So, how can we do in Thailand now? Um, we have a new plan. Uh, this is the draft uh, support, support practice for uh, creative economy plan in Thailand. Um, yes, our policy is to promote. This is the key issue that Accelerate, accelerate uh, action, for example, uh, promote intellectual property creation to keep track with uh, technological change or tax benefit in Thailand for uh, some company uh, who would like to uh, create a film and music in Thailand. And uh, yes, uh, for, uh, 
finan financial uh, instrument, uh, we have a good policy for uh, investment too. Um, maybe I move. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I compare for how to promote uh, the the soft power in Thailand, I would like to compare uh, between uh, Thailand, US, UK, uh, South Korea, uh, Singapore, and Taiwan. Uh, you will see that. Uh, for the uh, donations, for the crowd funding, we have a different uh, style now in uh, all of the country. And uh, this is uh, very important for uh, promote the soft power. Uh, we create a PE trust uh, for promote uh, soft power and to promote the music industry in, in, in Thailand too. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and Professor Elton? So my presentation will be quite short and sweet. These will be 10 minutes, so I'm just gonna cover some basic stuff in and out. All right, you've already heard who I am, so next slide. So what I wanted to talk about, particularly in the context uh, I was asked to talk, um, in the framework of TikTok, <clears throat> to talk a little bit about the pros and cons, if you will, the way uh, artists might be viewing and using the platform. And so I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things that I think are um, perceived as good, and then we'll talk about some things that are perceived as bad, and I know then we'll dive deeper into the topic later. Our moderator has some great questions on these topics. So um, just to sort of put a little food for thought out there with respect to some things that are good about social media platforms, and, and especially about TikTok, um, I think what you found is, uh, in the United States at least, I think this is true of a lot of places as well, independent artists, so by that I mean recording artists who are not working with a record label, they're doing it on their own, DIY, do it yourself, as we say when we use that acronym, independent artists, um, they have access to these platforms. And generally speaking, uh, the use of the platforms are typically free, although you can certainly choose to spend some money on some advertising if you want to. But um, it's starting off a social media campaign, starting to post on your own profile is free. Um, and a lot of the, the ways that music was marketed prior to social media platforms um, took you know, real financial investment, which made it very difficult for an independent artist to be able to actually market themselves. So certainly a, a big pro is the access that artists have. Um, what they have today more than ever before is uh, guidance on how best to use the platforms. So you could do a simple search in your favorite search engine of you know best practices for a musician using TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or whatever platform you like and you're likely to find a number of well-written articles, uh, PDF guides, um, and videos from some really knowledgeable people explaining how to use these platforms. And so there is more information out there than ever before on how to go about using these platforms effectively. Um, and that's a good thing that it's not only the access is there, but also the know-how, the instructions, if you will, on how independent artists can utilize these platforms and get the most out of them. Also, um, a lot of these different platforms have been providing uh, creator tool sets to artists that um, help them make videos uh, and other content that they post on the platform and um, showing them some analytics about the way people are engaging with their content. Um, and that goes hand in hand with these guides, these instructions that exist that explain you know, um, how to interpret some of that data and realize what's working and what's not working so that you can adjust your efforts. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, another really good thing is um, you are able to monetize content on these platforms. Now, I have to say, it's a very, very small amount of money, generally speaking, for an independent artist. 
um, in terms of what they're making monetarily from using a platform like TikTok or others. Social media platforms I'm talking about, not music platforms like Spotify or Apple Music. Um, they can monetize their content. Um, that's a good thing, albeit it not generating much money. Um, but there are mechanisms through the use of distributors, third-party companies that are focused particularly on the independent artist, uh, providing them a mechanism to actually get paid something when their music is used in a short-form video on these platforms. Very little money, but it is still their money. So those would be some sort of headline uh, benefits, I think, that are worth mentioning. Let's go to the next slide. So these are some of the downsides that we're seeing. Um, I think um, there is a little too much emphasis on one platform right now, um, which is risky. Uh, most of you are probably too young to remember, but there used to be a platform called MySpace. And the idea that platforms are never gonna go away, it's just there forever, um, is just not true. Um, platforms come and platforms go. Um, and so, you know, whenever any industry is relying, you know, putting all of their focus, their eggs in the basket, as the little icon shows you, on one platform, that's risky behavior. Um, I think the good news, the offset to that, is that as much as TikTok is this, this huge platform, the short form video format is not now unique to TikTok. Um, Instagram, uh, you know, YouTube, of all the other platforms are getting into short form video, which, which means that if all of a sudden TikTok went away, was banned, I'm sure we'll probably get into a little bit of that later, depending on where you are, I think the short form video format is here to stay, um, and there are other outlets for that. So that's a bit of an offsetting, you know, a bit of risk management instead of focusing solely on one platform only. Um, the other thing that you have to keep in mind for all social media platforms is the artist, whether they're an independent artist or with a record label, you don't actually own the relationship with your followers. The platform is in complete control of how you can reach them, how often you do it, when you post something, if it shows up in their feed or not. That's beyond your control and they can change their policies just like that and you have nothing to say about it. And so. Um, People need to realize, people of all types who use these platforms to promote their product and try to connect and engage with their fan base or the consumer base, is you don't own the relationship to them on these platforms. The platform does. Um, some best practices that independent artists, all artists really are told to do, is to get those people off the platform and over to your website, signing up for your own email list so that you can actually send messages directly to your fans. And so uh, amongst the many instructions provided in those guides, things like calls to action that you know you don't say on a daily basis, but every so often you say, hey, don't forget to sign up for my mailing list, go to my website, www. whatever, and sign up for my mailing list. That way if the platform closes tomorrow or says you can only message your people once a month, um, you now have a direct connection to them. So that's an offset to that, uh, it's a way to you know um, mitigate that risk, but it's still there. Um, the other thing is there is a backlash happening uh, against these sort of, uh, particularly on TikTok, music that seems like it was created specifically for the purpose of going viral on TikTok. Um, and I think you know the fans of platforms like TikTok and other short form video content um, very much want to be exposed to something authentic, and they you know something will happen, it'll take off, and then everybody tries to replicate it, and by then, you know, the community on that social media platform is, is aware that this is now trying to follow the formula of the one thing that was successful and will push back against it. And so you are seeing some backlash happening there, which I think was to be expected. Um, and then lastly, you know, you, you do hear from some artists, some really famous artists, uh, even Adele was one of them. Um, and, and Halsey was another one um, saying, you know, they're really, they're unhappy with their record labels pushing them to be posting more often on TikTok. Well, why aren't you doing more videos? You need to do so many videos a week. And the artist feeling like that's not what I want to do. That's not who I am. Um, and I think that's also, you know, personally not unexpected. Um, I think, I think there is 
certainly a mindset amongst artists that they got into this to make music and to connect with people and that sometimes spending that time to create a snappy TikTok video is taking away time from their working on their core artistry. Um, that short form video format is, is a bit incompatible in my opinion with true art. Um, you know, some of the most amazing art we've seen throughout time may not grab you and pull you in in the first three seconds. Um, and so I think, you know, not everybody uh, thinks this is a good thing. And I think a lot of artists um, are, are really saying like, I'm, I'm busy creating, I want to be creating music and doing things that are more impactful than having to make some silly, cheesy video for TikTok that's going to make um, some particular subset of my fans who live on there happy. And so those are some examples of some of the things we're seeing that are not so great about it. So that's just some food for thought, and I know we're going to get into a lot of questions about these kinds of things next. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Elton. Uh, before we go to audience for questions, uh, Bob, uh, why don't you share your like general overview or perspective uh, regarding this uh, social media benefits and challenges. Okay, now I certainly, uh, Professor Elton uh, did a wonderful job with that. Uh, the one thing I would say is I think social media, the, the social piece of it, uh, it, it's not broadcasting, it's not a radio station putting out content. It's people who are able to engage with each other more directly uh, than, than just a, you know, a one direction kind of communication from a broadcaster to an audience. And I think to the extent that TikTok has turned into a radio station or, or a, a video station, uh, you know, it's not really social media anymore. It's just a distribution channel, you know. And I think the thing that social media, the, the great promise that it had and still has, I think, is that people can build communities, of, you know, around things that they like or that they've discovered and they want to share with other people. And social media kind of allows that to happen and it's maybe not happening as much as it should. And that's something that I think you know, could be terrific, and so many artists have discovered an audience because, you know, uh, you know, in, in a pre-social media world, you might know about something, and somebody, you know, two towns over might know about it, but you don't know each other, and you're never going to find each other. On social media, you can find each other. Uh, so it, it can be a great way of building an audience and building a community. Um, but I think that uh, that's not happening as much, and, and it's maybe sort of less what social media is about now than it was, you know, five years ago. Thank you. So now we're going to go to audience for any question regarding social media uh, benefits and challenges for music ecosystem. So if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand and uh, like wait where at where you are. We'll bring the microphone to you. Any any question? Yes, Eric. Um, I guess uh, I'll ask the uh, obligatory sort of uh, inflammatory question, which is, uh, will um, social media, I, I mean, <clears throat> maybe I'll, I'll start it by, uh, by, setting the context. I think, I think TikTok is a little bit different from earlier social media platforms like MySpace or even YouTube um, in the sense that, I mean, of course it's short form video, um, but there is a different kind of engagement, I feel like. I'm, I'm not a big TikTok user, my kids are, but I've researched it and it does seem like um, there there does seem to be a different engagement um, among users, and users feel, um, you know, uh, more, I guess, um, involved in uh, the development of an artist, say, that, that breaks on TikTok, um, that sort of thing, um, and, and then, you know, everyone sort of feels like they're in it together, the artist, the community that's building around the artist, um, and, um, and I've heard many um, uh, up-and-coming artists who have broken on TikTok say, 
uh, why would I sign with the label at this point? Um, and I've heard marketing executives at labels say, um, uh, in fact, uh, 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 one analogy I heard that the, the executive make was, um, it used to be, you know, uh, marketing a record, marketing an artist was kind of like a puzzle for a toddler. There were three pieces and you just kind of put them together with radio and, and you know, record store promotion, whatever. Now it's like a thousand piece puzzle and TikTok is the only piece in the puzzle that seems to change the entire uh, sort of environment. That's the one that moves everything. And it, so in other, uh, I interpret that to mean the labels also sort of feel like we've got to go to TikTok. We've got to promote through TikTok. And again, I guess not to focus just on this platform, but it is the platform du jour. And so, and it is the one everyone's sort of thinking about. And I guess it raises the question then, this is the, you know, the, uh, the controversial question. Uh, is there something new and different about the way that social media is developing that um, that does start to obsolete labels, that does start to really uh, present for the first, maybe, maybe for the first time, um, you know, a, 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 a very different, very viable path to a successful career for an independent musician who just simply doesn't need to go with a label at this point. I would say no more than some of the other more recent, I don't know that TikTok has changed that. In that, first of all, I think it's important to understand the TikTok audience, despite the fact that some of us who are, you know, out of our teenage years may use the platform, it's an extremely young audience. <clears throat> and so popular music is the sweet spot because popular music's always been targeted at a youth audience. That doesn't mean that every kind of music is going to uh, find its audience on TikTok, right? So that's, that's, that is, it's a, it's a large population, but it's a, a very particular one. It's not true of, of everything. Um, separately from that, I think it depends on what you're trying, as a recording artist, what kind of a career you're trying to have. Um, you know, a lot of, I, I've heard of some other artists also that were discovered, found on TikTok, and then pulled off the success, which many don't, which is that they got people off the TikTok platform to go listen to their music on Spotify or Apple Music, which actually generated some money. And, uh, that A lot of them aren't successful enough to get them off platform to come follow me elsewhere. Um, but I don't know how well some of them are doing from a live touring perspective or other component parts of their career. So I think, you know, if you're if your goal is, I just want a really catchy viral track in and out, then TikTok may be the place to go. If you're trying to have a very lengthy career and people opening doors, putting you in touch with great producers and other songwriters and getting you on The Tonight Show, and you know, which is a popular television show in America, and getting, getting all these other avenues lined up for your career, then TikTok alone, I would argue, is not gonna do that. So I think it, it depends on the goal of the recording artist. Um, you know, TikTok fans are dedicated to a point, but they're also fickle and it's also easy because it's free for them. That doesn't mean it's gonna translate free for the people who are on the TikTok platform. That doesn't necessarily mean across the board they're gonna translate into paying fans who buy concert tickets, spend money on your music. Some, there's been some success stories, but we often hear about the handful of success stories and not the millions of people who are not getting anywhere with the platform. So I don't know if TikTok has changed that uh, any more so than the conversations we were having pre-TikTok, which is why would you have a label? You can get your own music on Spotify, you can do this. What does a label do for you? I don't know if the conversation has really been changed that much by TikTok, but that's just one person's opinion. Yeah, I think that's a Yes, uh, I just come back from China uh, last month, and in China now we talk about uh, the uh, cyber sovereignty too, and we talk too much about uh, how to regulate how to uh, regulate for uh, the new technology. For example, if uh, we talk about 
uh, intellectual property. Uh, we we think about uh, the license agreement, but uh, in the new conception, the things about, uh, for example, the, the how to how to uh, regulate by the new technology or, or the words uh, uh, law by design, and uh, how to decide the technology related with the uh, the law. Yeah. For for example, uh, I show. I have just shown about the taxonomy, how to decide the taxonomy uh, for the uh, data sharing platform for regulate. Because uh, our old fashions, we, we enforcement, we, we regulate by, by, uh, the, the, by, by the law, by the, hard, uh, by the hard power, not by the soft power. But in, uh, I think in uh, Asian country, we, we think a difference about this. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, one more question back there. I should probably just yell, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> You need to talk in the mic for the recording being made. Oh, yeah, of course. So, what I'm curious about is what your thoughts are in terms of social media and globalization of music. Because as someone who's been like a fan of K-pop and stuff since the 2000s, but growing up in Ireland, I was the only person I knew who heard that music. And I, now we can see even in the last like three to five years, Korean music has exploded, Japanese music has exploded, they're selling out tours and doing multiple new dates in countries like the US where it wasn't present before. What how do you think social media has allowed artists to engage globally, both from big labels and maybe from smaller artists who couldn't leverage traditional methods? Well, I think it's huge. Uh, I mean, and so, Asha, I should say, my slides were sort of what's new and different. The point you're bringing up is, is a way bigger one, which is what you were touching on, which is that social media in all ways, on all topics, including music, has enabled you to connect with people beyond your own local neighborhood. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Um, and so music, of course, um, is, is very much, music discovery um, ha has benefited from the fact that, you know, there's, there's a group of people who like every kind of different little niche and they can find each other and find those artists on social media in a way that they couldn't in their own local neighborhoods. So the benefit is, you, I don't think you can even try to quantify how enormous that truly is. It was almost too big for me to put it on the slide as a pro because it's so big, such an obvious pro um, that it does, you know, it, it's enabling discovery and, you know, we've become a very fragmented um, industry, as we are in many parts of life where, you know, you like this, I like polka blended with the bluegrass. That's my, that's my thing. I like this weird hybrid, but I'm able to find other people that like it all over the globe. Um, it's tremendous. I, I mean, and I think we just continue to see that benefit, um, which is a, a huge, um, a good, good outcome of it all. And anyone else? Oh, so we have one more question. I'd like to ask a quick question about something that um, some people may argue actually has occurred more often due to social media. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, the idea of industry plants and um, this other term, nepotism, babies. So a lot of people like to, uh, would argue that the presence of social media, especially TikTok, has actually made it much easier for um, artists that are considered industry plants or artists who have benefited from having familial ties to already present figures in the music industry. Um, people argue that this actually makes it much easier for them to uh, gain popularity and is actually kind of oversaturating social media, especially TikTok, and also making it harder for authentic indie artists to kind of gain popularity because um, people start accusing um, authentic independent artists of like 
being industry plants or already having ties. So I would just like to ask, what is your opinion on how social media has really kind of correlated to this um, growing trend of um, people being aware of um, industry plants and uh, other kinds of artists? Well, I mean, I think the truth is social media platforms, they're available to everybody. Now, maybe you're an independent artist and you're figuring out on your own and, and you haven't gotten some of those guide documents that I'm talking about and so you're starting off and you're doing a pretty bad job at it and you don't really know what you're doing and all oh, isn't that cute. And some superstar is also doing it who has a team of people that have studied the platform and know that if you post at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, you get the maximum response and that this is how you should mention, you know. I mean, it's never a level playing field in in any way that music is promoted in that um, the expertise of the person trying to promote something and who's guiding them is always going to, I think, play a role in how polished what you get is. Um, and there are a lot of people who are, who are fans of TikTok and other platforms who love connecting with Taylor Swift and they, they love getting their big superstars to, who they know are all the contents being well managed. Um, and so I think, I mean, you hear some of that, but I, I would argue, again, you know, we don't have the statistics, it's not like TikTok publishes statistics on how many independent artists use the platform. The vast majority of artists trying to break it on TikTok are not major label artists and being managed by big marketing teams statistically, but the ones who are the most successful might be because there's something to be said for having a team of people advising you how to best go about something. I mean, what is what is great is that, again, a lot of the tools on those platforms are free to use, um, but there there is still a benefit for people who do have the money to also pay for advertising and, and get their posts you know, boosted higher, showing up more frequently in a feed. So it's, it's enabled, it's provided access to many, many independent artists who are really using it to their advantage, but it has not created a completely level playing field um, because the party that has money to spend for that you know, extra boost on the platform and has teams of people strategizing the best content to create, times to post, all of that are still gonna have the advantage. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm not surprised by it, and, um, and people certainly have their opinion and say, oh, you're an industry plant. Uh, I don't know, I, I, yeah. I don't know if I have anything more to say on that other than people will always complain that somebody else has an unfair advantage. Thank you, thank you. We, we actually has, uh, I mean, one, only one more minute, so uh, we're going to stop here. But obviously this is a great uh, topic, and then uh, I actually, I personally wanted to ask about like uh, power dynamics. Like, uh, like Francis Bacon once said, like knowledge is power, but now it's like information is power. And social media, actually you don't have to like uh, obtain any knowledge, you can just like point your finger to various sources, oh here's the information, there's information, so in a sense, like I, I question sometimes like, uh, well can social media bring some sort of uh, democracy in like a music ecosystem? And then the follow-up question is, who should have more like power, like or there's some like a company, I'm sure TikTok and YouTube or whatever company, they, they have actually power to uh, kind of uh, modify their algorithm to expose some artists or something. So they can totally influence all, all these things. So my question is really about like a power dynamics in this uh, the era of social media. And then again, the question is, who should have more power in this like, relationship? Any, any like one, uh, one sentence answer? <laughs> uh, may I share a little bit? Uh, we have a new issue about the data. Uh, what do you think uh, data is the property or not? This is very important because uh, maybe in the future we have uh, law case, law, uh, yeah, law case between 
uh, someone who argument that this is my intellectual property, but the others argue that uh, oh no, this is the uh, privacy. This is not the property. Uh, what's happen next? This is uh, very important for us, for 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 lawyers too. Thank you. Who should have the power? I mean. You know, it's easy to say, power to the people, and have everybody love you for saying that. Um, it's also, you know, I I've come up through the large corporate world, and they're going to go, I'm, I'm investing the money. I want some power back for that investment. So there's certainly, you know, at least two very obvious points of view. Um, and, you know, where you stand on that is probably a lot about your personal view on on power in general. <laughs> so... So I don't, I don't know that there is a right answer um, to that question, which is my way of kicking it down the curb, not answering it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, time, well, time is up. So we're going to take a, a 10 minute break or 13 minute break. So please uh, take the break this time and come back by uh, four o'clock. Thank you very much. Stretch our legs. I'm sorry. 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 I